Is this the most comfortable shoe of 2023? Let's find out. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the upcoming Nike Invincible Run Flyknit 3. But before we dive into the sneaker itself, let me first give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Soul Premise. Now obviously this shoe is designed to be a performance running sneaker, but in my opinion, it's one of the most comfortable sneakers on the market, not to ruin the review for you guys, but I usually wear comfortable sneakers whenever I'm traveling, and the other thing I bring with me pretty much every time I'm traveling is my Soul Premise backpack. Soul Premise makes some of the best bags out there. They have backpacks, they have duffel bags, now they even have roller bags, and all these bags are specifically designed to not only carry your valuables, like your laptop and your clothing, but also your sneakers. All of their bags are very very high quality, they look great, and they're TSA approved, which means you can bring them onto the airplane with you rather than having to check them underneath the plane. Which means that you can keep your valuables safe with you rather than having to worry if they're gonna make it to the destination. So if you wanna check out Soul Premise for yourself, make sure to click the link in the top of the description below and use my code Seth for 40% off your entire order. And once again, huge thank you to Soul Premise for being a longtime supporter of the channel. But getting back into the shoes themselves, the Nike Invincible Run Flyknit 3 should be releasing sometime in February or March of this year for a retail price of 100 80 bucks, which yes is not cheap, but is the same price as the outgoing Nike Invincible Run Flyknit 2. And actually, if you want to grab a pair of these, if you're watching this video after their release, or maybe you want to grab a pair of the outgoing model on sale, make sure to click the link in the YouTube shopping tab below this video or on your screen. But to start things off, I've got to say that I had incredibly high expectations for the Nike Invincible Run Flyknit 3. That name is ridiculously long. And the reason for that is because I love the Invincible Run 1s and I love the Invincible Run 2s. In fact, for the last two years, I've done top 10 lists of the top top 10 most comfortable sneakers available, and the Invincible Run was always on the top of the list. So that's why when I heard about this sneaker, I expected it to be the most comfortable shoe of 2023. And the good news is, so far, it doesn't disappoint. So I've had this sneaker for about four days, and since I got this shoe in, I've been wearing it every single day. I've gone in multiple runs in this shoe, I've exercised in this shoe, I've just walked around in this shoe, and I've gotta say, after these four days, I'm pretty impressed. Now the nice thing about the Invincible Run 3 versus the Invincible Run 2 or 1 is that this shoe seems to have been completely redesigned, at least visually, and that's something that between the 2s and the 1s didn't really happen. Those shoes looked almost identical to one another, and there really was only minor differences to the upper of the shoe. And I said in both of my reviews of both of those shoes, I thought those shoes were ugly. I thought they were the ugliest shoes, but they were so incredibly comfortable, they became a shoe that I wore almost every single day. And as someone who loves sneakers and loved the way that sneakers look, it was a bummer to throw on a pair of shoes that I hated the way that they looked, but they were so comfortable I just couldn't not wear them. But this time around, it seems like Nike has gone back and completely redesigned the shoe and made it something that actually looks really, really good. No, it's not a crazy new futuristic design that's been completely updated to make the shoe look like it's out of 2030, but what's nice about this shoe is that they really streamlined the design and made it a very classic and clean looking Nike running sneaker. It does have some futuristic hits, but overall it looks like a standard Nike running sneaker, and for a lot of people, that's what they want. But the nice thing is, is that the aesthetic of the shoe is not the only thing that Nike updated. They also updated some of the materials, some of the shape of the midsole to make it a little bit better for performance running, and overall Overall, I think it's a significantly better shoe than last year's model. So in terms of colorway, this is the Aqua Noise colorway. I believe this is one of the launch colorways. I think the first colorway to drop is the white colorway, and then this might also drop alongside it, or maybe it'll drop a couple weeks later. I'm not exactly sure. But either way, I think this is a very clean look and definitely something that I could see myself wearing on a daily basis. But getting into one of the biggest changes between the Invincible Run 3 and the Invincible Run 2 and 1, the upper of this shoe has been redesigned. It still uses a fly knit upper, which is great and feels amazing on foot, but they actually added some details to make this fit a little bit better, to make it a little bit more stable of a shoe, and also make it a bit more breathable. So the first thing you'll notice along the side of the upper is what Nike calls these embedded billow cables, which are these cables that are woven into the flyknit upper of the shoe that actually give the shoe a little bit more stability and more structure. Personally, I also really like the way that it looks. It gives the upper of the shoe a little bit more dimension and makes it a bit more interesting than any of the previous models, which, to be honest, had pretty boring uppers, and also the colorways of those shoes kind of sucked as well. I hate to say it, but the colorways did kind of suck. This colorway, on the other hand, I feel is a very strong start to the first drop of this shoe. I'm super excited about it. In addition to these embedded billow cables, Nike also added what they call zones of breathability. Now, they didn't specify where these zones of breathability are. They just said that they designed the shoe to be more breathable in areas that you need more breathability. So I'm assuming around the toe area, I'm assuming around, I guess, the bottom of the midfoot? Definitely not so much in the heel because it's really well padded. I don't know exactly where these zones of breathability are, but apparently they're there, and Nike says that they're great. 
But again, that's, you know, what Nike says. So until we wear the shoe for a couple months, there's no way to know for sure. But I will say that after running in this shoe outdoors three or four times, I was actually impressed by how breathable this shoe was. Is it more breathable than a standard Flyknit shoe? I didn't really notice a difference, but either way, it felt good on foot. It was breathable enough and uh, it definitely felt supportive, which is probably due to these embedded billow cables. Now, in terms of the actual comfort of this shoe compared to last year's model, I do have to say that it feels pretty similar. The upper on this shoe feels a bit more plasticky than last year's model, but it doesn't feel any different on foot. That's really just to the touch. And overall, it does provide some nice support in the midfoot of this shoe, which I appreciated. And around the heel of the sneaker, they definitely have added a little bit more padding than previous models, or maybe not a little bit more, but more strategically placed padding. So it does feel really good around your ankle. And while they have sort of moved around the padding a little bit on this shoe. It's a little bit different than last year's model. It's not any less comfortable than last year's model, which is a good thing. I mean, overall, I'd say it's comparable to last year's model. And last year's model was an incredibly comfortable upper. It was very breathable. It was very soft. It was very well padded. And that seems to be the case for this shoe. While it looks a little bit more streamlined, while the edges are not as puffy as they were in the previous model, you don't notice it on foot. Aesthetically, the upper of the shoe is pretty nice. You've got this large Nike swoosh on the toe of the sneaker. You've got this Nike swoosh on the lateral side that's made up of a bunch of lines. The medial side of this sneaker is plain, which I kind of like. No one's going to see it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And then as you move up on the sneaker, you've got these blue flat laces, which hold the shoe together really well. They definitely tie very nicely, which I appreciate. They don't ever slip on me, which is sometimes a problem for laces, especially on running sneakers. Underneath the laces, you've got more of that fly knit on the tongue. And then at the top of the tongue, you've got this bright orange tag, as well as some nice padding, which feels great against the top of your foot. Moving inside the shoe, like I mentioned, you've got some really nice padding around the ankle area. Unlike last year's model, there's not this soft edge. Instead, you've got this sort of raw line at edge, which I thought might rub against my ankle, but it doesn't seem to. Moving inside the sneaker, you've got this dark blue insole with the Nike logos printed on the heel in orange. And the insole itself is actually pretty plain and pretty thin, but that's okay because you've got this giant Zoom X midsole, which feels amazing underfoot. In terms of sizing and fit, the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flying at 3 does seem to fit true to size, which was the case for the previous models. So if you're grabbing a pair of these, I would suggest going true to size. However, if you have the chance to try this shoe on first before you buy it, I definitely suggest to do that to make sure that you're grabbing the right size for you, especially if you're running in this shoe, you don't want to grab a shoe that's the wrong size. It feels awful. Also, let's be real. Your shoes won't be the most comfortable shoes that they can be without an extremely comfortable pair of socks. And that's where Apothecary socks come in. So Apothecary is a sock brand that I co-founded. We make some of the most comfortable socks on the market. They look great. They fit great. They're incredibly breathable and they're very soft on foot. And actually, we recently teamed up with Philadelphia artist Nozego to release our brand new artist collection. This collection drops officially on Friday the 27th at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on apothecary.com. And of course, because this collaboration takes place on Apothecary socks, they're incredibly comfortable on foot and go great with your brand new Nike Invincible Run 3s. Continuing back in the shoe, you've got this sort of iridescent tape around the heel of the sneaker, which features the Zoom X branding printed onto it in blue. And just below that, you've got this very thin and much smaller heel counter that comes in this light blue plastic. Now, according to Nike, this heel clip or heel counter is a lot smaller than last year's model and is apparently a lot more strategically placed and helps with stability. I didn't notice a huge difference in stability around the heel of the shoe compared to last year's model. It was fine overall. One of the biggest complaints that people have had about the Invincible Run line of sneakers is that the shoe isn't very stable, but I don't think that's because of the heel area. I think that's more of the midfoot and the fact that the shoe itself is so soft that you can kind of slide around on the footbed of the shoe. The heel counter this year hasn't seemed to have made a huge difference, but it's definitely not bad. And this is a much more stable shoe than last year. However, I don't think that's entirely due to the heel counter. I think that's more due to the new midsole shape which we'll talk about in a second. Continuing around to the heel of the shoe, you've got a blue pull tab with this iridescent, I'm assuming 3M strip running down the center. And then moving down on the shoe, we get to the main event, this insanely thick Zoom X midsole, which is unbelievably comfortable underfoot. And in my opinion, makes this shoe and all the previous Zoom X Invincible runs the most comfortable shoes of their respective years. This midsole is incredibly soft underfoot. Now, while this midsole does look significantly different from any of the previous years, comfort wise and underfoot feel wise, it's pretty similar. It's the same stack height or generally the same stack height. I think it's maybe a millimeter or two different, but overall softness wise, it's pretty much the same as the Invincible Run 2. Visually though, whew, it is significantly nicer. It's just such a cleaner design. And yes, you can see the creasing in the Zoom X a lot more in this model than previous models, but I don't care. I think the speed lines on the side of this shoe just look so great. It's just a much cleaner design that was necessary. The previous two models, just looks so ugly in my opinion. Maybe you don't agree with me on that. I mean, compared to this shoe, they were just, oh, 
They were awful. This is a huge, huge improvement. I love what Nike did with this sneaker. I think it just looks significantly better, and it's definitely a shoe that I am willing to wear outside every day. Now, there are some changes to the shape of the midsole besides just aesthetic changes, and the first is that they made the midsole a lot wider around the forefoot of the shoe, which increases stability, and I found that after running in the shoe for a couple days, I had no stability problems whatsoever. And the second is that they actually made the shape of this midsole a rocker shape, so it actually propels you into the next step, which is a lot nicer than the previous midsoles. I'll admit, I'm not that much of a runner. I do run occasionally, but I usually get really tired really quickly. And the nice thing about this shoe is because of the foam that they used and because of the shape of the midsole, I found myself running faster and farther than I usually do. And that's because it really leads you into the next step. And the foam itself, while being incredibly soft underfoot, is also very responsive. Now, obviously, this is more of a neutral, casual running sneaker. This is not something that you're running races in or not something that you're trying to set mile times in. It's something that just helps you run longer and farther than you usually would run. And because of that, there's no carbon fiber plate in the midsole of the shoe. Just like the previous versions of the shoe, neither of them had carbon fiber plates, which means you can really feel the Zoomax underneath your foot, which feels amazing. And if you're looking for a max cushion shoe, this is a great way to go, in my opinion. And hey, even if you're not using this shoe for running like myself, I will run in this shoe occasionally but most of the time I'll just be wearing this shoe for lifestyle wear and comfort wise this shoe is incredible this shoe is absolutely incredible is it more comfortable than the invincible run 2 it's about the same but I mean it looks so much better so in my opinion if you have to decide between those two shoes the three and the two I'd go with the three purely on aesthetics alone in terms of running I think that the invincible run 3 is significantly better than the invincible run 2 because of the minor improvements that were made on the shoe I think all of them combined make this sneaker a better runner overall and then the final change that Nike made to the sneaker was increasing the thickness of the outsole rubber so that apparently this shoe is gonna be more durable over time I didn't have too many issues with the durability of my pair but maybe that's because I wasn't running in my pair a bunch in the Invincible Run flying at twos. This time around, it's apparently more durable. It's a little bit lighter weight because they cut out more holes in the outsole, and apparently it's more flexible. I don't know if that's true, but uh, I mean, it feels fine overall, and it had no problem with traction, even in the rain, which I really liked. So overall, in my opinion, as of right now, in January 2023, the Nike ZoomX Invincible Run Flying It 3 is the most comfortable shoe available on the market. With that being said, it is very possible that another brand or even Nike themselves could come out with a more comfortable shoe. And it also depends on what you consider comfortable. In my opinion, comfort is max cushion. For you, it might be something different. So take all this with a grain of salt, but I will say, as of right now, if I'm trying to grab the most comfortable everyday shoe, this is the shoe for me. And I love the fact that Nike made this shoe look so much better than previous models. It's not that the other models look that bad, but when compared to this shoe, it's like a night and day difference. This shoe is just such a great running sneaker, especially for someone like me who doesn't run on an incredibly regular basis. I run maybe once a week, and this shoe helps me continue running rather than getting completely worn out right in the beginning of my run. Not only that, it's just a great lifestyle sneaker. It looks good, it's super comfortable on foot. I can't recommend this shoe enough. It's an incredible sneaker, and for 180 bucks, while yes, that is high, it's definitely worth it. But hey, I would love to know your thoughts on the upcoming Nike ZoomX Invincible Run Flying It 3, and whether you're planning to grab a pair of these for yourself when they finally release in the United States. So make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.